December 6th, 1972. Eugene Cernan, veteran astronaut and commander of Apollo 17. He would be the last Apollo astronaut to stand on the surface of the moon. Dr. Harrison Schmidt, better known as Jack. He would be the first geologist to set foot on an alien world. Ronald Evans, command module pilot. He would remain in lunar orbit, operating a battery of experiments that would take this last close look at the moon. In the year 1675, Sir Isaac Newton was asked by his fellow scientist, Robert Hooke, how he had accomplished so much. If I have seen further, Newton wrote, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. automatic done by the sequencer. One command, pressurized the S4B stage, was not given. And despite the fact that it was going to be done manually, the sequencer, in effect, said, uh, I didn't tell you to do it, and therefore you can't be doing it. So at 30 seconds, it very properly stopped the operation. Uh, most of the work was being done right off the firing room in the launch control center at Kennedy. However, there was a great deal of support from the Marshall Space Flight Center, who had a comparable operational group working there with their contractors. So we concluded that we were safe, and we gave the word uh, to jump out to one signal and proceed, uh, which we did. After checking out the spacecraft in Earth orbit, they burned out of orbit and headed toward the moon. Houston, we're right in the middle of a snowstorm. Turn out there, long way. Ron Evans, at the controls of the Command Module America, moved in to dock with the lunar module Challenger. They pulled Challenger free of the booster's third That's stage, the then continued the three-day coast to the moon. Even as Cernan, Evans, and Schmidt headed toward the moon, directly below the Apollo 17 control room, Flight Director Don Putty ran his crew through a launch simulation for the first Skylab. Uh, as you're probably well aware, we are still working on other programs, Skylab being the prime effort starting in the spring of, the, of uh, next year. Uh, we're also working on the uh, cooperative mission with the Russians, which will take place in 1975. And, of course, we've got quite a few of uh, the flight control team as well as other center elements involved in the work on the shuttle. So it's, it's the start of a new era, I hope. Skylab, of course, will fly in the spring of next year with three men going up and spending 28 days. And then two months later, after they land, we'll put three men up for 56 days. They'll come down, and 30 days later, another three will go for 56 days. So year of uh, 73, calendar year, will certainly be a busy one from the standpoint of manned space flight. December 10, 1972. America and Challenger went into orbit around the moon. Houston, this is America. You can breathe easier. America has arrived on station for the Challenger head. 
The next day, December 11th, Cernan and Schmidt entered the lunar module and undocked. You look just as pretty in Earth light as you do in uh, sunlight. With the command module in the distance, they passed over their landing place, a valley in an area of the moon called Taurus Litro. Here they hoped to find the youngest material yet sampled, and direct evidence of lunar volcanoes. You're looking real good, Gene. Right down the line. Oh, man, we're level with the top of the massif now. Okay, stand by for pitch over. Oh, are we coming in? Picture is proceeded. And there it is, Houston. There's Camelot. Wide off target. I see it. We got them all. 42 degrees, 37 degrees, to 5,500. 53 degrees. Okay, we're going to Okay, I've got Marae, I've got Poppy, I've got the triangle. That's 2,500 feet, 52 degrees. H dot is good at 2,000. H dot is good. Fuel is good. Going down at 10, cut the H dot. The fuel's good. 110 feet, stand by for some dust. Little forward, G. Take forward a little. 90 feet. Little forward velocity, 80 feet, going down at three. Getting a little dust, going down about two. Very little dust, very little dust. Stand by for touchdown. Stand by, 25 feet, down at two. Feels good, 20 feet. Going down at two, ten feet. Ten feet. That contact. That push. And then stop. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Roger, Challenger, that's super. Houston, you can tell America that Challenger is a Taurus Litro. December 11th. Soon, then Schmidt left the lunar module to begin their first EVA. As I step off at the surface at Taurus Litro, we'd like to dedicate the first steps of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. Their first job was to unload equipment, including their rover, the electric car in which they would drive to the exploration sites. That's beautiful. This has got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. We thank you very much. As Cernan drove the equipment-laden rover, Schmidt carried the scientific experiments package called ALSEP. Hey, do you need me, G? Well, I'm going to go deploy an ALSEP. Have at it. In Houston, scientists in the science support room watched, correlating and directing their movements. Okay, Bob, I've got my tools of the trade right here. As Schmidt set up the various experiments, Cernan drilled a series of holes, both to collect core samples and to implant experimental probes. Yeah. Oh, we're, out, we're out in the ejecta blanket of Camelot for sure now. Yeah. Man, it didn't feel like this stuff was that hard. No, I'll get it. I knew there was something I needed to get the jack in over here, other side. Let me, let me uh, put some weight here. Oh, he's going slowly, Bill. Very slowly. I'm going to get this thing out now that I got it. Boy, 
Boys, you know, that's what you call getting down into your work. Yeah, that's 29 and a half minutes from now, but remember, they left this side a little bit late. There he is. Okay. Jim, you better make it clear to Parker that we got to pull out. On the moon and on the Earth, they were fighting time now. There are just so many hours of oxygen and water in the backpacks. So many hours of life in the vacuum of the moon. We're up in all the area. Watch that cable. Cable, cable, oh. cable. Watch the cable. Cable number one. Yeah, they're all fixed, Lee. They'll break the whole world before they'll break the cable this time. With the ALSEP functioning, they left the site for a shortened sampling traverse. Well, many parts of the ALSEP are functioning very well. The uh, heat flow experiment is working excellently. It's transmitting back temperature data. The uh, cooling down is still cooling down from the, uh, the drilling process, and in a few hours they should be starting to get true heat flow information. Let's see if I can't crack the uh, corner and get that contact. See if I can't get it. Look at the folders out there. It was time to head back to the Challenger, activate experiments, and get back inside. Man. I was rolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May. May. May the month. May, that's right. As the astronauts rested, engineers in two nations were working out technical problems of the Apollo-Soyuz test program, the first joint Russian and American space mission. Well, the prime purpose of the Apollo-Soyuz joint mission is to prove out a uh, compatible docking system and demonstrate that we have compatible operational procedures that will let two different countries dock in space. I think more than that, it has a, certainly a symbolic meaning of these two large powers uh, learning to work together in space, which I believe are the new seas of mankind, the new frontiers, and work out solutions to problems wherein, uh, although we're very competitive, uh, we can still be cooperative and assist each other. And I think that this Apollo Soyuz program stands for just that. Oh, what a nice day. They would have one task before they got to work exploring. The previous day, they had broken a rear fender of the rover. The dust thrown up was causing trouble. Apollo 16 commander John Young had worked that night in a pressure suit on a way to fix the fender. On the moon, the astronauts put it together. The fender section formed from a lunar map, molded with tape, then held in place with clamps from the lunar module telescope. It was a repair that would last the remainder of the mission. Then Schmidt moved out to place one of several explosive packages, which would be detonated after they left the moon, mapping the lunar subsurface, much as earthly geologists explore for oil. Cernan would pick him up in the rover for the drive to the first site on this traverse, Station 2. They're somewhere along this rim where they can see. But they're, but they're dropping, Bill, so they must be coming across that thing. We're right where we wanted to be for Station 2, and it looks like a great place. Big blocks, it looks like quite a bit of variety from here, different colors anyway. Pretty hard, isn't it? That boat is going to roll. Man, that is hard. <laughs> Just don't stub your toe. The foreground features are somewhat different. Simply because they were farther up onto the hill, I think. But that, otherwise, that's remarkable. Pottery, it's obviously very, uh, very cohesive because it, it, uh, the bottom of the core is not smooth. It's very jaggedy and fragmental-like. Gene's finished with the, uh, you know, the core tube, then we should be able to go. If we get that get over that. Oh, dead coming. 
Jack Schmidt having a few problems. They would sample several locations on this EVA, but none would cause more excitement than the find of the crater called Shorty. exciting we've uh, come across uh, since the uh, beginning of the uh, Apollo program. I believe that it's going to be the most rewarding of all the finds on Apollo. Uh, light gray material on either side. Oh man, that's incredible. Hey Gene, we're going to have to, that's incredible. You need to get a down sun color. There isn't enough time, Tony, to do it, no matter which way you want to do it. We need more time. We may have to slip. We have to slip five in a little bit. Keep getting about uh, about three centimeters of wax. So you got to leave at a certain time, regardless of what we got. Willing to give up all the light mantle stuff. They had to leave Shorty Crater and its orange soil and push on. Time, the enemy of the lunar investigator on the moon and on Earth. The precious minutes had run out. Return to the rover, drive back to the Challenger, close out EVA 2. We'd like you to leave immediately. Okay. My golly, this time goes fast. As the last Apollo crew worked on the moon, the engineers on Earth prepared for tomorrow's day in space. Uh, I have a model here of the space shuttle. As you see, it uh, resembles a Delta Wing airplane on top of a uh, propulsion system. The system is going to be designed so all of the costly parts are reusable. Uh, now that we're beginning to understand space, we're beginning to understand uh, the potential, the economic potential. The need is to bring larger arrays of instrumentation up in space. The need to provide man with a real capability to work up in space. Okay, Bob, I'm on the pad. And it's about 4.30, Wednesday afternoon, as I step out onto the plains of Taurus Lickdraw. Beautiful valley. December 13th. Yesterday, they had explored the south end of the valley. Today, they would go north. Yeah, well, let's ask for an extension. Hey, Jim, this is the last time for you to really go to bat for us, Jim. Sunday we know back. you'll do it for us. Send an extension for that Al Yeah. Holy smiley. <laughs> Why are we on a slope? You okay? Man, that's rough country in there, isn't it? Well, must have been, must well you're looking well, across well, Henry. Yeah. yeah. Apollo science will continue, and I'm sure much of the mysteries uh, will continue to come out for many years to come. But of this I'm sure, man has learned that space is his to explore, and man will return to space to explore, to the moon and beyond. I'm firmly convinced that it's changed the whole basis of philosophy, including religion. I don't think that we've begun to see uh, what the era of spaceflight really is. It, uh, we've got a long way to go, and I hope I'm living when we leave this solar system on a venture to find another planet Earth.
Once more it was time. Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt returned to the rover to drive back to Challenger. But before they left the surface of the moon, there would be a brief ceremony. It's a rock composed of many fragments of many sizes and many shapes. When we return this rock, or some of the others like it to Houston, we'd like to share a piece of this rock with so many of the countries throughout the world. We hope that this will be a symbol of what our feelings are, what the feelings of the Apollo program are, and the symbol of mankind that we can live in peace and harmony in the future. And a final word from the last man on the moon. I'd like to just let what I believe history will record that America's challenge of today has forged man's destiny of tomorrow. While Cernan and Schmidt closed out the last moonwalk and prepared for tomorrow's liftoff, Ron Evans worked on in orbit. Photograph, observe, describe. Keep operating the cameras and experiments in the science experiments bay. In orbit, as on the surface, the seconds are precious. Possibility at this stage. Uh, I, how is the experiment working now? Okay. Working extremely well. We're looking for subsurface geologic structure in the broad sense, layering, for example. This is the infrared scanning radiometer. Uh, what uh, what does that do? The radiometer measures the temperature of the moon and makes a an accurate map of the temperature uh, beneath the spacecraft. It is working with uh, tremendous success. Uh, one other thing: How is the, the experiment uh, working mechanically as far as the man and the machine? Uh, the experiment itself, the hardware is working. Perfectly, precisely the way it was supposed to work. Everything has functioned properly. An important part of the experiment is it requires the man to operate it. 99, proceeded. 3, 2, 1, ignition. Run away, Houston. Vector grid. Mag spot. Get over. Now, here you have good trust. Okay, 30 seconds. 308, your number. Take out to 1,500 feet, and eight dot looks good. On the descent stage of Challenger, forever on the moon, they left a plaque reading, Here man completed his first explorations of the moon, December 1972 A.D. May the spirit of peace in which we came be reflected in the lives of all mankind. One revolution later, Cernan and Schmidt caught up with Evans and prepared for docking. Good to see you. Good to have you all back up here. It's been a good trip. Man, that Challenger is a beautiful vehicle. You bet you. December 16th, burn out of lunar orbit and head home to Earth. Sir, Houston, America has found some fair winds and following seas, and we're on our way home. <laughs> hey, this is great. Talk, talk about being a spaceman. This is it. December 17th, 170,000 miles from Earth. Ron Evans left the command module. Hello, Mark. <laughs> we see you, Ron. Looking great. Okay. Hey, John. How you doing? Hi, Jamie. Evans was retrieving film canisters from the two cameras and the lunar sounding radar. Data vital to the scientists on Earth. Before he got back inside, Evans took a last look at the Crescent Earth. In two more days, they would be home. 
December 19th. They rode inside a 5,000-degree fireball through the atmosphere of Earth, stowed in the spacecraft almost 250 pounds of the moon. This closes a golden chapter in the age of space exploration. In a way, it brings a close to what has been a very romantic era in space exploration. But, and I want to make this very strong, the book is still being written. The Moon, a lonely world in the absence of man. But here we have left our mark, a signature attesting a legacy to future generations. We stood on the shoulders of giants and touched the moon. <laughs>